Hello and welcome to my presentation on genetic biology with the topic of Swire syndrome, a disorder of the sexual development with a genetic basis. And what is interesting about this disorder is that when you look at the carrier type, at the genotype, when you look at the 46XY chromosomes, you see a male genotype. But when you then have a look at the phenotype, you actually see a female phenotype. So there's incongruence and disagreement between the genotype and the phenotype of this disorder is its main characteristics. And in order to explain this disorder on a biological, biological basis, I'll first talk about the let's say normal or unaffected sex, sex determination. Later on I'll give you a definition of the syndrome and of its scientific discovery and we also have a look at the original Swires document. Next up we're going to talk about the external changes and the internal changes, changes of people affected with this disorder as well as the gene mutation be behind all of that or the most common gene mutation behind Swires syndrome. Also we have a look at the development of the affected person throughout the embryonic stage up to adulthood um, the genetic association of Swire syndrome as well as similar conditions and as always in the end I'll have my bibliography posted so if you need the sources I used for schoolwork or if you're just interested in it feel free to use them and if all of that seems interesting to you feel free to keep on watching and I hope you enjoy so starting up with the sex determination in a human organism let's say you have the x cell the ovum in the woman that provides the x chromosome for the zygote and then you have the sperm cell that provides either an x chromosome or a y chromosome and there you have as you can see for a female presenting person a, a double x chromosome and here you have an xy chromosome and if you have a look the xy chromosome causes the SRI and the SRI is the sex determining region or the sex determining gene that then synthesizes or encodes for the sex determining region Y protein that acts as a regulator by attaching to a certain to certain parts of the DNA and causing the development of testes that are the male gonads so uh, sex glands that produce gametes or sex cells um, and subsequently sex hormones of an organism which leads to the um, biolog biological gender formation and this happens if you have that SRI gene present which is encoded by the XY chromosomes in the embryonic gonads um, the, the sex glands and for the female ones it's the exact op opposite so you have no sex determining region Y um, gene and no sex determining region Y protein so the testes determining factor isn't present so you have ovaries that then produce female um, sex hormones such as estrogen and progesterone as opposed to the male testosterone and that is the sex determining agent for people that are the uh, sex determination for people that are not affected with um, disorders of the kinds such as Swire syndrome. And what Swire syndrome specifically does is the following. It's a gene mutation as I already established and it's a disorder of sex development where the genotype does not apply to the phenotype. So we have females with 46 XY chromosomes and this is um, said uh, this is called a pure gonadal dysgenesis, so a non-formation of the gonads, of the sex glands. And it's also a type of hypogonadism, so the diminished functional, uh, functional activity of gonads. It occurs one in 80,000 people. It's a relatively rare disease and one that is not often talked about. And there are many genetic associations and in that sense causes, genetic causes for the, the occurrence of this phenotype and genotype situation. And affected are medically considered intersex. Moreover, there are 
many medical synonyms for the Swire syndrome because Swire comes from, as we see in a moment, the name of the person that first documented the case. So Swire syndrome can also be called 46XY, CGD, PGD, which are abbreviations for complete gonadal dysgenesis and pure gonadal dysgenesis, and it can also be referred to as sex reversal. So moving on, we have the history of the scientific discovery of Swire syndrome. On the left, you can see a very short excerpt of the paper published by people such as Swire and other people um, of the endocrinology department. And it was referred to as male pseudohermaphrodism. So hermaphrodism, when you have the occurring phenotype of both genders, either medically or um, of that sort of situation. And you have and this was discovered in 1955. It was the first referenced case in medical uh, literature, but it, of course, occurred early on. It was just not documented. Then you have Taylor and other people in 1966 that discovered that um, people with Swire syndrome uh, have a high risk of neoplasia, which is basically the um, abnormal or excessive growth leading to cancer, which then led to more scientific research, such, a, such as research from Jaeger et al. Um, in 1990, um, that made more research for mutation in the Y chromosome. And when you move on, you see here, I found this these in some archives, um, the original document that first documented um, Swire syndrome, well, by Swire it was as I already mentioned, called male pseudohermaphrodism, um, a hitherto undescribed form. And it made um, observations in one case of the person, for, so the first case before having any sort of um, female hormone treatment and case two with a following hormone treatment. And because this document was published in the um, 60s, no, the 50s, um, when I read it, it seemed to some extent a bit outdated because they also talked about behaviors that are, let's say, stereotypical for male and female. So they not only looked at the biological, um, the biological observations, but also at the social observations between the two cases. So before the treatment and after the treatment, which is to some extent, biologically fallible. Now, moving on to the external changes. Um, these are the aforementioned cases that have been documented, and they were the only real documents I found online when researching. So we have case one before therapy and case two after therapy. And general characteristics include a tall stature and no secondary sex characteristics, so no formation of breast, for example. Um, we also have a primary amenorrhea, so a lack of menstruation, a small reproductive system, an enlarged clitoris, and unicoid proportions, which refers to um, proportions resembling a eunuch. So this hermaphrodism that has been observed in this case and other cases. Now we, have, we come to the internal changes that include uh, the lack of presence of ovaries. And there's only the presence of functionless clumps of tissue called street gonads as opposed to um, unaffected gonads. Um, we have this hypogonadism, which I already talked about in the definition, so there's no functional activity of these street gonads. There's also an absence of sexual hormones for either sex, and there's no sexual development, so the person is generally infertile with this condition. And an additional um, change could also be low bone density tied to the hormonal development. Now, when talking about the gene mutation. There's a 15% to 20% um, variation that the mutation of the SRI gene is in the Y chromosome, so that the cause, the genetic cause of Swire syndrome is found in the Y chromosome, but there are also um, different genetic factors that could also lead to the same syndrome. 
and SRI codes for the protein that attaches to the DNA as a regulator and activates the processes for sexual development. For example, it activates the process for testes um, determining factors and the development of testes and male gonads. And Jaeger, as I already mentioned in the history part, um, said that the gene mutation is a so-called frame shift mutation with a deletion of four nucleotides, de nuovo. And it's self-explanatory why it is de nuovo, as people with no sexual development cannot have children and thus cannot pass it on genetically. Um, it's also an impaired protein biosynthesis or non-functional protein um, with the explanation of that deletion. And on the right, you can see um, the um, impaired bi protein biosynthesis of the Y chromosome. And when talking about the development of an affected person, we talk about, first of all, the mutation that um, most likely occurs between the seventh or the eighth embryonic week with a non-functional SRI protein and no testes determining factor and thus no testes. And the default is then a female reproductive system. Then we, have, we come to the prepudescent um, stage, which is generally a normal or unaffected development with no signs of mutation and condition, which is why it most likely is not di diagnosed at that age. And then with the set-on of puberty, a halted sexu sexual development can be observed, so as a disorder of sexual development, and the person remains in the prepudescent, prepudescent stage, which is, which is also the, um, referred to as sexual infantilism. And genetic associations are not only SRI um, related, but also related to um, other uh, parts of the genotype, which I won't be focusing on because my lack of expertise is very apparent in that region. So I'm sorry for that. But there are different genetic associations, not only with the SRI gene. And similar conditions also include the CAH part, which you can read here, and the CAIS. And what is interesting there is that all of them have fem female, uh, f female phenotypes, but only the Swire syndrome in those examples have streak gonads. The other one have fully functioning or um, male gonads. I don't know if they're fully functioning, but they are male gonads testes. And in the reverse of that, Swire syndrome affected people have malarians or female organs, whereas the other similar condition have not. But then in the end, they have the same phenotype and the same to some extent, the um, same genetic observations that are evident for those disorders. And yes, this was my short um, presentation on SWI syndrome. This is my bibliography and my sources. And I thank you for listening and watching.